The Mount Sinai Otolaryngology Surgical Video Series presents cochlear implantation. This procedure is commonly performed by members of our Neurotology Division for patients of all ages with severe, otherwise irreparable hearing loss. This video was edited by Zachary Schwamm. Here we have a right ear with incision marked about 1 cm posterior to the posterior crease. An incision is made with a scalpel and a bovi is used to get down to the level of the temporalis fascia superiorly and the posterior muscle about midway down. A skin and soft tissue flap is raised anteriorly just deep to the posterior muscle, leaving a layer of periosteum on the mastoid. A rectangular periosteal or palva flap is then made with the bovi. It is important not to bovi over the tip of the mastoid so as not to damage the facial nerve. The periosteum is then raised off the bone with a lempered elevator to the spine of Henley. Self-retaining retractors are placed in the anterior, posterior, and superior, inferior directions to clear the field. Here the mastoidectomy cavity is outlined and critical structures labeled. A large cutting burr is then used to perform the mastoidectomy. We drill parallel to critical structures, namely the tegmen superiorly, the sigmoid sinus posteriorly, and the ear canal anteriorly. Once in the antrum, one can see the lateral semicircular canal surrounded by trabecular bone. In order to see the incus, one has to look parallel to the tegmen and turn the patient away from the surgeon. The short process and body of the incus are then clearly visible. We then proceed to begin drilling of the facial recess, which consists of the mastoid segment of the facial nerve, corda tympani nerve, and incus buttress, which is a small island of bone left on the incus short process to maintain ossicular stability. We drill parallel to the facial nerve with a diamond burr with copious irrigation so as not to induce thermal damage. Thinning of the ear canal is critical to exposing the facial recess. A facial recess air cell is then visualized with soft tissue removed with a rosin pick. Here is a label diagram of the facial recess consisting of the facial nerve posteriorly, the corda tympani anteriorly, and the incus buttress superiorly. One can also see the tympanic segment of the facial nerve with the dashed lines representing the extrapolated course of it turning just inferior to the lateral semicircular canal. The air cell and rest of the recess are opened until the round window is seen in the distance. The round window overhang is drilled down until one can see the entirety of the membrane. This is an ideal view of the anatomy through the facial recess. Note that the round window membrane is approximately 2 to 3 mm antero-inferior to the stapes. Tapping on the incus induces a nice round window reflex. The subperiosteal pocket is then made posterior and superior to the mastoidectomy cavity at an angle of approximately 45 degrees to the horizontal, as demonstrated by the symbol theta. It is important to make a tight pocket or else the implant is at risk of migration. The pocket size is confirmed with a silastic dummy of the implant receiver stimulator. Next, the area where the electrodes are expected to emanate from the implant is marked out and the silastic dummy removed. While not performed in every case, one of our surgeons creates a bony overhang that helps to seat the electrodes. The actual implant is then gently placed into the pocket. This particular company's implants have two electrodes, a shorter ground lead and the longer stimulation lead that goes into the cochlea. The ground lead is then placed under the temporalis muscle and out of the way. 
The round window is now visualized through the facial recess. As this was a hearing preservation case, we did not open the round window until we were ready to place the implant. The round window is lysed with a rosin pick and there is no fluid suction from the cochlea. The implant electrode is then brought into place and gently put into the scala tympani. It is critically important to note the change in trajectory after initial insertion. The secondary trajectory will minimize electrode trauma and better parallel the path of the basal turn. The implant is slowly inserted over two minutes to in between the two white lines. A small piece of periosteum and fascia are then packed around the implant to seal the round window. The electrode is then coiled in the mastoid. The periosteal flap is then sutured back together as a secondary layer of closure. It is important not to spear the implant during this closure. The rest of the periosteum and skin are then closed and a confirmatory intraoperative x-ray is obtained to ensure intracochlear location of the implant. Upon zooming in, one can see great electrode placement with excellent cochlear coverage and no tip foldover.